Good afternoon and welcome once again to WebFG TV. Joining us today is Brenda Kelly. She is market strategist at IG. Brenda, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, you were right. Indeed, the Bank of England is going to bring forward the date of the first increase in bank rate. You were telling me a week ago that you expected it to occur in October. Is that still your full expectation? Some people are, there's some people holding out. Some people are saying February, January, November. How do you see it? Well, I think it could be October or November okay. of this year. I, I do certainly believe that the new members of the Monetary Policy Committee will upset the balance of what has been quite a dovish Bank of England over the last number of years. And of course, the fact that we have seen unemployment creep back down a little bit, we've seen house prices starting to rise yes. actually really very dramatically. And of course, there is a little bit of pressure on the Bank of England to, to act at this particular moment in time to cool down that housing market. Right. But what I did mention last Last week is that I think that the FPC will more than likely roll back on some of the fiscal policies that they have in place uh, which are there to I suppose support the housing boom and that will happen probably September and then we'll see the interest rate hike. Uh, what has been interesting is that a lot of the UK companies have been suffering at the hands of a strong pound so I think to actually go ahead raise the interest rates Possibly not by quarter of a percent, maybe a little bit less okay. than that, um, mm -hmm. but a gradual increase, but not too close to the general elections. Right. That is the key problem here. No government will want to see an interest rate hike just before a general election. So it'll be gradual and it will happen, as I said, sooner rather than the first quarter of next year. Right, but what about the Bank of England independence? They are, right. Well, there is obviously an independence there, and um, Bank of England would say that they are not in control of the housing boom, that that is down to mm -hmm. the politicians. And you could argue that perhaps the politicians themselves did not um, allow for that in the most recent budget. There was nothing there that really helped to, to put a bit of dampener on the, the housing bubble that we're currently seeing. So there's probably an element of the fact that they will be, you scratch my back and we, I'll scratch yours. Mm -hmm. We'll pull back on the policies that are helping to stoke it and you can help us a little bit further by hiking the interest rates as well as the fact that we've got a lot of different um, uh, mortgage policies that have been put in place that are all there to try and dampen what's been happening. The macro prudential yeah. measures. Precisely, right. yes. This week we have the meetings of the last meeting of the MPC. We also have the quarterly meeting of the FPC. Everybody's talking about macro prudential measures. Everybody talks about putting limits on certain types of mortgages. What about perhaps putting a, placing a stamp duty on foreigners buying property in London? Is that an option? I think that should be an option. Mm -hmm. uh, and if anything, it's something that should be done before you put any sort of restrictions on mortgages. Um, a lot of what we're seeing, particularly in London and the Southeast, is not a credit field boom. Mm -hmm. It's very much safe haven capital flow coming from Europe, coming from Russia, possibly China as well, and none of that is actually uh, been able to be controlled by any mortgage policy uh, improvements or denials. So I think a stamp duty and possibly a capital gains tax uh, of an increase for non-residents right. would we do an awful lot more than putting a cap on the mortgages that are currently available. All right. How far do you see cable going? I think cable has still hasn't managed to get through that 170 mark mm. against the US dollar, but um, I think once we do, you can imagine there are a huge amount of options expiring around mm -hmm. that particular right. metric. Mm -hmm. And I think once we get through 170.50, it's going to trigger a lot of stop losses mm -hmm. and a lot of long orders as well. My key target at the moment, as long as we get through that 170 mm -hmm. level, will be around the 173.40. And I okay. think that could happen in a matter of months uh, for, for cable. Okay. Do you see risks that it eventually, looking at the macro backdrop, it's hard to tell, mm -hmm. but that it could go even further above, uh, further higher, say 175, 180 even? I think that won't be necessarily to do with the pound, I think it'd be more to do with the US dollar. Uh -huh. And I think if you look at what's been happening in the US over the last few months, mm -hmm. we've seen constant revisions to GDP growth mm -hmm. in the first quarter. And yes, you can say it was the bad weather, um, and certainly it does look like unemployment is going in the right direction, but there's still no inflation there. And I think pulling back on tapering, while there is a global disinflation spiral taking place, mm -hmm. might make the Fed 
stop and think a little bit. And that in itself, if they decide to maybe continue the status quo, perhaps, but maybe uh, reduce the taper ever so slightly okay. uh, in order to sh be sure that inflation is making a return. And that in itself, I think, could lead to a bit of weakness in the US dollar, which could be the catalyst for a push up towards those 175 levels against the pound. Okay, so then you are a bit of a contrarian. Despite the latest non farm payrolls numbers, you're still on the cautious side of the debate as far as the strength of the US economy. I certainly am. I think the participation rate is something that we need mm. to focus on a little bit more. And the fact that there are numerous 700,000 people out there looking for more work. They're working in part-time jobs. So right. there is a still a great element of slack left in the US mm. economy, more so than perhaps in the UK. And I think pulling back on the QE and even tightening monetary policy too soon could have a detrimental effect. And it's not necessarily what Janet Yellen will want to do. She'll want to be sure that everything's on an even keel and we're back to pre-crisis highs in terms of GDP levels, not equity levels, GDP right. levels. And then and only then can we look at tightening monetary policy. Okay. In markets now, traders, there's a lot of talk about volatility. We finished towards the end of the week more or less towards seven-year lows. A danger sign, a warning signal? If you look at volatility over the last number of tops in the markets, mm. it has normally marked uh, mm. an area that maybe a big reversal is about to take place. And we okay. saw it in 96, we saw it in 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. and now we're seeing an all-time low. And you do have to question why that actually is. Uh, is it that the market is getting overly complacent or is it something else as well? And I think if you look at the volatility index versus the dollar index, mm -hmm. they do tend to work in lockstep with each okay. other. And that has been the, the, the key issue there, the fact that we have seen a linear tapering of QE and we've come to learn to expect that from the, from the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, um, we could be looking for a bit of a, a jolt in the US dollar, which I think will feed into the volatility index. And as an aside, we do generally, and I've seen quite recently, see uh, a full moon uh -huh, uh, mark the, the top and bottom of volatility index. Now, I am not an astrologist, mm -hmm. but I do feel that sometimes uh, it is worthwhile having a look at different areas. And if many people believe that the full moon marks the bottom of volatility, then that could mean it marks the bottom of volatility. So <clears throat> on Friday, we might have seen a bit of a short-term top in the market. I equity think it could be quite possible. And then the fact that we've seen equity markets actually finish lower in the week does tend to make me believe that this could be the start of a, a bigger correction. Not a complete reversal, certainly, mm -hmm. but we have been looking for a co correction for a long period of time now, and this could be the, the time to do it. The FTSE 100, for example, the 67.70 mark, mm -hmm. I think that really is the, the line in the sand for the FTSE. And if we do see a daily close, or even better yet, a weekly close, close through that, we could see a return down to the 200 day moving average, about a 300 point correction there. Okay. And I would expect that if that is to happen, uh, then it will be a global effect rather than <laughs> just UK based. Okay. Finally, geopolitics, Iraq. How dangerous can the situation get there? Could that perhaps also contribute to stoking volatility in the markets? It is rather unexpected. It certainly is, and I think most would believe that that actual Iraq invasion and the, the pulling out of troops was well and truly a done deal. Uh, but certainly, I think the markets might react a little bit uh, to it, given the fact that we have seen such low volatility, and markets do like well, not like, but they do look at worry and look at the problems that there might be. And any sort of push up in the, the oil price hmm. is always going to have an impact on businesses, margins and profits. And this, of course, will lead perhaps to some people taking some money off the table mm -hmm. in the equity market. So, mm -hmm. of course, if we do see um, like boots on the ground, uh, then I would say that it contributed quite heavily to okay. the oil price premium and a little bit more downside in equity markets. How far do you think, I know this is an extremely difficult question, but how far do you think that the price of a barrel of Brent would need to go for equity traders to start getting really nervous? Well, if you look at where it was a week ago, and we've climbed up from $103 a barrel to over $106 a barrel, I mean, it's not a huge amount in the grand scheme not of things, all. but if we went back up towards the highs, more recent highs, around the $125 per barrel mark, mm -hmm. that would, I suppose, reignite the uh, the memories of when we were looking at oil at around $140 a barrel. 
So from that point of view, it might actually mark a little bit of um, problems. Mm. And of course, that, as I think, will, will concern traders and investors and even in general economies alike, that this will have an impact and that it could go higher. So yeah, I think it would have to go through the 120 mark to really get things moving on that. All right, fantastic. Brenda Kelly, market strategist, IG, thank you very much for your time. And as always, thank you very much for your time. And that's all from us here at Weather TV for today. Until next time.